Hello and welcome to tonight's Sunday Sessions. We've got about two weeks to go before we fully collapse and are you hanging in there? Oh, it's tough, isn't it? It's, you know, this last little bit. Uh, we're all working really hard. Uh, the nights are closing in. It's a bit colder. It's going to be really cold tonight. But here in the little teacher squad team, there's a glimmer of love and hope and light and just a little bit of warmth. Now, um, we're going to talk tonight about reading. And this is our last time together before Christmas, if you're not involved in the live lessons. And then you see me in my other Mrs. C teacher personality. Um, and uh, we're uh, meeting for the children. And we're getting some little fan mail. That's so cute and adorable. Um, so that's wonderful. And thank you for all those people involved in that and the effort that your children make. Now, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to really tune into what demonstration reading is and uh, how to do it well. I don't mean demonstration reading, actually. Uh, I do care about that, but I'm not even going to talk. I don't know why I said that. I don't, I'm not actually even going to talk about that. Uh, I have tired brain uh, and it's, yeah, it's, there's a, a weird feedback loop. Uh, what I wanted to say, can we start again? Can, we, can it not be live? Can we edit that out? No, uh, no thanks. Uh, anyway, this is uh, demonstration comprehension, in fact. It's a good job I know what the hell is going on. Um, so our gorgeous community, and I know everybody doesn't come together, never quote me out of context. Uh, we have people who follow up and watch later on down the line uh, and all of that jazz. Uh, some of you manage to uh, bring your partners who aren't even teachers, poor souls, and they have to put up with me for a bit. Uh, but why are we here? Because actually we really do like uh, talking about teaching and learning, sharpening it up, and we're a collective who look after each other and the issues and uh, stuff we talk about enable us then to have wider conversations about things we care about uh, because we actually really love our jobs and we want to be really good at it. Uh, so this is all about um, a little a cosy little clarification uh, of CPD uh, where we crystallise our thinking and gives us a chance uh, to absorb some new things or actually just reflect on things we've been doing for donkey's years uh, or we forgot we were good at them and we get, we get re-reminded. So everything that I talk about tonight is really what should we focus on to be the very best that we can be. Um, but I couldn't be here uh, without Ian who's propped me up this week because we've been so busy and he's had to keep me going. Uh, good boy. Uh, good Mr C this week. He's in a good mood. I'm tired, he's looking after me, and uh, he's looking after the chat, actually, he's looking after everybody. Introduce yourself, Mr. C. Hi there, hello everybody. Yes, we're very tired, we've been working on quite a lot this last week or so. Uh, we've been finishing off the first of the five spelling books, so we're just finishing off the year two one taken up sort of like all of the hours and we know that we're not really tired like you lot are tired it's not like the end of autumn term tired for teachers but <coughs> we're knackered and uh, so expect lots of mistakes we've also been getting ready for which Jane's going to talk about in a bit our live virtual training day that we're doing on January the 4th for right so which is our proper training single day that Jane doesn't get drunk in and um, yeah, we've just been very sort of like working all the hours that God sends, haven't we, Jane? But so please do excuse any errors or any swears or anything like that tonight. Oh, I'll put it back to Jane. And the irony, any spelling mistakes as she writes her spelling book. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm dead good at uh, spelling clangers uh, as it goes. Uh, as I've shown myself on many occasions. Uh, in fact, in the live lessons last week, uh, we had slither of a snake and slither of cake, and I got my slithers all sliding around on the wrong slithering bit. Um, 
yeah, nightmare. Anyway, um, so just so you know, um, and Ian mentioned it there, what we do, we've got different types of training, basically. Uh, there's training where you um, can come together with lots of different schools and you have me live and virtual and we pack it into a day and um, it's like the Sunday sessions. It's like this, but it's a whole day and it's uh, on the right stuff and that's coming down the line. But then we have other packages where um, they're kind of modular and you can watch them at your, your own pace and you can rewind me and you think, I don't know what she's going on about, let's rewatch and uh, access it at your leisure. So that is something to look at, all the different ways. Um, as somebody, uh, somebody's called it being Janified. I don't know if that's, I'm going to take that as a compliment on being Janified. Oh, God help you. Right, so that's all happening. Um, now, the real stuff that we're here for, we are here to actually get a sliver with a VER, thank you, of um, demonstration comprehension. And you know uh, already that all the work I do with uh, improving uh, the interface between teaching and learning is giving strong models and guidance, mind frames, as it were. Mr. C, have you, he's like, I'm getting the, what, what's yeah, going on? I've yeah. got a question. I've been warned as well, whenever I talk, I've got to put the camera on because Good people boy. can't hear me. So, uh, first spelling mistake, Jane. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, what's Everybody's it? spotted it apart oh, from you. Oh, what? Nobody's said it yet, but everybody has spotted it. What is it? See if it you can work it out. Oh no, you tell me. On here, on this page. Can't work. Yeah. So it's Operation Allies. Yeah. Not Operation like she's oh, forget it. She's from Birmingham. We'll let her get away with it. She does <laughs> So her phonetic spelling is distorted by a real accent. Because she puts on a posh accent with you lot. <laughs> when she's at home, she's a proper <laughs> yum yum. Oh my goodness. Right. Am I back on camera? Back on camera. Yeah. Right, well, that's gone. Yeah, stop discrediting yourself. Just before the spelling book launch, you absolute can I just bull. Can I just say something else as well? Because yeah. a couple of people are talking about the sound. Yes. So could you, are people finding your microphone sound or just mine? Is it your microphone's playing up or just my microphone? Because it looks like it should be okay from here. Could you speak, please? Oh, me? Yeah. Can you hear me okay, everybody? If right. not... I'm just going to play around with the mics. Okay. We think we've at the mic as well. We kn oh. we knew we knew we were a bit shonky today. We felt yeah, it. Ask them yeah. it. Has that improved my volume? Have we even turned the mic on, Ian? The Do mic you? is on, but it's the settings went. Are we are we too loud now? Are we okay. okay. We back. I on. did tell you we're absolutely knackered. So if, um, I shouldn't sound better than Jane. That's one of her contractual <laughs> sort of <like laughs> insistencies. <laughs> so I'm just going. <laughs> Right, am I am I the correct volume? Oh, now, thank you. I reckon he hasn't even turned it on, and he has to, he always does that. Like, oh, let's just let's pretend that's a uh, technical glitch. Right, well there you go. We're we're well officially rubbish. I'm, I'm making spelling mistakes left, right, and centre. No, sh I don't even care is. about the bloody word now. So zip it. And then uh, you were uh, you you're mucking it. Like you're supposed to be super tech guy. There's no no tech support here. Couldn't be bothered to turn the mic on. I'm right. I'm not a teacher, Jane. I'm not a teacher tech. <laughs> right, okay. So, should we just start again? Should we start again? I feel like now I have to reproject my voice, even though the mic's sorted. I'll st I won't do that. That's when actors actually move from theatre to TV and have to be told to stop projecting. Not that that's my life, you know. I wouldn't, you know, the old failed actress bit. Right, um, Reading Rainbow. This is where we begin middle lies. If any words left on. <laughs> right, I don't think I can actually do tonight. I'm so tired. Thank you, good night. <laughs> I've got no words. Uh, right. What is this? It's great. I love it.
Oh, life. This is the Reading Rainbow. And uh, do you know what? It props you up when you're tired and you think you're going to lose it. And you have to go and lock yourself in a stock cupboard with tears rolling down your face. Oh, that used to be me and Wendy. Oh, dear. My favourite TA. We should just it be in bits. Uh, and that's, that's a joke for another day. Um, anyway... Yeah, I can't tell that online. Right, um, so the reading rainbow. This is about how we become really clear about how we're teaching reading. The children have a visual, uh, a, a very systematic and explicit way of beginning to file their thinking and read through these lenses. And this is what enables us to um, question for breadth, uh, enable children to be good reading detectives, follow lines of inquiry, it sharpens how we teach reading comprehension and it also sharpens how we interrogate books and once we set the system in motion as it were, children become more and more adept at uh, being able to read through the breadth of these lenses. So. This is really crucial, and I suppose this is where the um, the reading modular course has come from. Uh, that actually that needed to be explained properly when you're not tired and uh, you've got clarity of thinking yourself. Um, so that you know, in the hooked on butch training, that's about I'd say ten hours of training material. That that does have clarity and uh, people are really certain then of how they can make it work, bring it to life in their rooms. So that's that. And what I'm going to do tonight, and um, you've heard me talk about this before, and this is uh, why I really love, like genuinely, professionally love you guys, is that we're getting to a point where, um, and this is often what I think CPD should be like, it doesn't have to be like wowsy, radical new ideas. It's kind of what we've always known, plus being research informed, plus that sort of uh, sharpening. And so you you know I care about the reading rainbow, and it has developed over years and years and years. Um, and then also when we use it, we want to use it in a way where we're always working with three reasons to read. Three reasons to read in terms of uh, what we're investigating and talking about, or three uh, comprehension questions, and we always work with three reasons. We assess under the umbrella of three reasons to assess children, and that is also how we're looking at their learning. Okay, now, before I get to the nitty gritty of um, demonstration comprehension, because that is what I'm talking about, I think, um, I wanted just to make this kind of more casual comment about how we might read pictures, that really sort of bigger way of looking at reading, uh, coming from the visual kind of an illustration or a photograph, and that actually uh, the reading rainbow is your friend as well when you're looking at pictures because you can jump into that picture and almost do a 360 degree uh, analysis uh, around it through the rainbow uh, and particularly uh, through the fantastics. And we have lots of uh, really good case studies actually from foundation stage year one all the way up to year six but particularly in the early years of key stage one um how um that top tier of reading and reading a picture how uh the fantastics can come to life and i know you guys have some and some of you actually um you know your your home lives uh, when you go on holiday is like oh i'm going on holiday here i'm going to collect loads of memorabilia that you know end up being in topic boxes and things like that or um you know we, and we're going to probably have to start doing this again you know the old um it's hard to do it though now but in the old days we collect little kodak film um 
what are they called? You know, like plastic reels, like, reels but not the film. Those pots. They're actual pots, and then you put PVA glue in it, not and really then it's really. like, oh, we'll move, we'll move up to a YPO glue stick, and now we can't afford them. So God knows, we just like lick things into butts. We don't because it's COVID. That's a joke. Uh, okay. Um, so I just want to show you here how the Fantastics and other aspects of the Reading Rainbow can uh, provide this kind of full exploration of an event or a moment. So if you look here, it's like, well, what is that girl looking at? What, is she, what can she see? Um, and that we can you know all our thinking linked to building writing uh if you look here we can say well what are the you no know, how does she feel what are some of the words can we build them into phrases can we build them into clauses um so what does she touch cold windows itchy seats her cheek touched the cold but humid window and pulled her mind back into the train carriage so it's that there's so much kind of rinsing out wringing out of um information where the fantastics can really deepen thinking and ideas and of course we are in the business of thinking that's what our jobs are um so i wanted to mention that because um it's that reading pictures aspect that we do know about and we do do reasonably well. But I think particularly uh, for younger children to start there uh, is an excellent way to develop their understanding of that top tier of the reading rainbow. OK, so demonstration comprehension. Now, this is... Well, it's called what it is, essentially. And we know children not only have to showcase orally their thinking about books they've read. Ultimately, um, you know, and this year is a bit different, of course, but, you know, we have to show that children can write their comprehension answers and how to construct them. And they really do need a lot of help with that. And I see some excellent work in year five and six doing lots of modelled answers. But I do think there are places that it could improve and we could be even better at doing that. Now, there's what we want children to be. Now, this this I want to sift out two issues here. There is prepping children for the reading test. OK. And that's a different beast in my mind. That's them. I mean, there is an interface. You'll see that in what I'm talking about here. But there's like, there'll be times when you just want one answer or look how many marks it is. This is how you need to do this quickly. Or it's a, uh, it's a chart, you know, complete it at pace. It's one mark or something or two. And then there's this other aspect in reading papers where they do need to think uh, much deeper and, and construct an essay. But demonstration comprehension is actually we're going to train you to think deeply about text construct really meaty well-developed answers because we want you to have deep analytical thinking we want you to have confidence in your opinion and your lines of inquiry and then actually once we've developed that confidence then I can prepare you for a test do you know what I mean? And it's it's through demonstration comprehension we build their confidence, we build their skills. Um, and really, that is the point of reading. We want them to think deeply about it and be certain about what they want to say and have the language to illuminate their thinking. So you've heard me say this before as well. Oh, this is like the best CPD ever. Like she said this before, I've come along, I can have a drink and uh, she's got no new messages. That's quite comforting sometimes. And that's tonight. Um, so what we want children to do is read like detectives. We want them to follow lines of inquiry, use clues and evidence, and that actually they build these analytical write-ups uh, that kind of draw conclusions, big conclusions, and they've got something to say. Now, we get that. That's their 
uh, quality of their written answer. What we have to do to get there, that's, that's the nightmare. That is the nightmare. And we need to make our thinking visible. You know, all of the work with Collins and et al, his colleagues there, that is the point of what demonstration comprehension is. Here's a question. You need to do a deep answer. How the hell are we going to get kids to be able to do that? We need to really show them how to do that. And that's showing, and this is now, actually, if you listen to nothing else, you know, this is the bit I really want you to kind of take stock around uh, as to why we're doing this. So, hmm. crucial. We need to model how to build these answers. In this modelling, we're going to show them thesaurus thinking. They're going to see uh, invisible thinking made visible. And very crucially, we're going to take into that thinking made visible idea that we work with synonyms. So children get coached by us that we're working with families of words. Um, and those families of words, we've got, we've got two things on the go that we've got to do with improving children's written captures. We've got to do um, thesaurus thinking and high utility words in action. So it's the words that are more generic, have high lever leverage, are very productive. They are almost on the opposite side of story words you know, when we want to flower up a description, you know, the zhuzhi words, you know, sprinkling, glimmering, sparkling. These are like you're, you know, describing a star in a story. Uh, over here to these more powerful, high leverage words like uh, suggests, reveals, and they're more generic and these words will mean children who have more of these words are great at reading comprehension and explaining themselves. They are great at non-fiction writing and they are great in test situations. It's like it's win, win, win. So they need these. So both of these that we might group in primary as, oh, look at all of these great uh, high utility words. We've got to almost separate them out into the kind of story, very context specific words to these high leverage power base words. And they're both great. They're both great. And kids need more words, not less. Uh, wow, I did a bit of a dance routine now. Probably my arms are off camera. You were brilliant. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you tonight, how to kind of bring that all together. It's, it's basically what we know, but how do we live it? How do we breathe it? how do the kids understand it, that interface. So demonstration comprehension is the heart of it, is pupils need structures to grip onto. And those structures are going to be practised and have clarity. And this gorgeous, uh, practically uh, wordless picture book um, called Hike by P. Oswald sums it up for me because this book just for me is a visual representation beyond the uh, dad and the child who go on a walk in the wonders of the wood woodland you know uh, it is about for me modeling that dad is modeling how to interact with the environment uh, what to do out there the struggles how to persevere you know and enjoy it and it's and dad is transferring that over uh, dad is explicitly guiding their child into what to notice, what to see. And because of that modelling, uh, together there is this kind of shared new heights experience and knowledge. And um, that is, it's for me, that is almost teaching and learning encapsulated and the power of modelling. Um, and in all my years of working with schools uh, in a kind of a consultancy capacity, and it's probably, oh, Mr. C, what do you reckon? What? 
Did you see what he said then? What? Not listening. He's on his phone. He's on his phone. Can you believe it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, about 20 years. I would say it's like the classic. It's the devil's in the detail. Like they're, you know, that that's better than that. Why? That's what we're talking, you know, we all, you know, we all know what to do. We all want to be as good as we can be. And actually, what's the difference? It's a slither with a V, not a slither like a snake. It's so small. And we're in that moment, I think, with CPD, where we're talking about the, the smallest of things. Um, but it's these things, it's actually game changing. This is where like the magic can happen. It's, it's really interesting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do tonight is uh, do a whistle stop tour of demonstration comprehension kind of key stage one vibe and you'll feel the high expectations and you'll feel the challenge but it's how we coach and guide and show uh, and then we're going to do a key stage two demonstration comprehension so this book so this is kind of your kind of key stage one it's called dogs in space by vix southgate and it's about Belka and Strelka, two dogs uh, who is who are sent into space and are celebrated around the world. And it's a non-fiction, key stage one sort of uh, recount of that time, what happened and the impression they made. So that is a cracking book. Now, what we want to do um, after we've read it is and it and in fact think about this as well you might not read the whole book you might chunk it down um but let's say we read three pages and then um or we might even read less than that i'm a mass i'm just i'm such a massive fan of like small less targeted better you know, it, you can get overload. I mean, all if working memory research told us anything, it's like less is more. Do less, smaller, better, you know, sniper. So, yeah, I'd probably even chunk it, for, you know, further back than that. You don't have to read too much to get them to be thinking like a detective. Or you could read the whole book, but we're going to have questions on this page. Or we can read the whole book. Or the point of these questions is that you can access the book in different places to find the answers. But kind of be aware of your kind of teaching mission, I suppose. So, um, right. When we work with demonstration comprehension, we choose three reasons to read. So we want to ring fence. Remember I talk about all the time. We've got our writing teaching from year one upwards that might be an hour or so timetabled. That's called English or literacy. You want the main focus there to be writing. And then you want this ring fenced amount of time of about half an hour to teach reading. And one of the things you're going to do over a two week cycle where you've got a lovely mix of uh, book talk where you're talking comprehension answers. And then you've got kind of a chunk where you are doing um demonstration comprehension and you've got a once a week check-in to see what they have learnt because you've taken them up the mountain and shown them you've taken them to that height and shown them what they can do you know the hike that learning hike uh you know the amount of people who tweet me uh with the monday tears i get that a lot we tried your stuff it ended in tears you know like we had four kids in tears, we had teachers in tears, everyone's in tears, and then we have like the... Well, like the uh, government tears, tier one. No, no, <laughs> sort of tears, like tragic tears. Yeah, yeah. Like the government tears. Yeah, tier like the government tears, 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 like the government tears, but but then it's like when we when you work your room and you got the routine going and it's, it's not about kids can't learn this, it's not about high expectations, it's just like the training of a system... Then we have the, like the Thursday euphoric, you know, look at these kids, look how proud we are. It's like, yes, you know, 
if I had to do something new, look, I need a chance. I need a bit of training. This isn't this isn't gonna happen instantly, but it's we've got to go aim high to kind of get the panoramic view. And, and that's what we're gonna do. So this is this is how we'd run demonstration comprehension. We'd pick a reason to read and for demonstration comprehension, it's actually building, so really hear this, it's building a question through that lens. So for example, um, if I choose a feeling here uh, from the top tier of the reading rainbow, then the question might be this, how did people feel about Belka and Strelka? So it's showing children, look, this is a line of inquiry. This is how you can, you know, I'm asking you children to read, to find this out. And you're being asked about how people felt is through the lens of feeling. The other thing that I'm going to do is I know how crucial it is that children have words and I want to very deliberately show them more in my writing teaching when I'm teaching story or poetry, how we have um, high order vocabulary that story, poetry based, adjectives, description, that's there. But when I'm teaching non-fiction, or reading comprehension. So this is this is the home, and I'm going to say this bold and a line. You've heard me say it before, but this is when I want to teach reading comprehension or non-fiction. I am working with showcasing high utility words. These words that okay, I can use capture. I can use capture in stories. Of course, I can. But there are certain words that sort of have a a high level of versatility and these are really powerful in when you're trying to explain uh, what writers are doing when you want to illuminate your thinking when you want to want to be really accurate because you know what kids have a habit of doing saying this shows us this tells us I mean and I don't mean show and tell where they brought in a couple of conkers I mean they cannot stop using the words show and tell in comprehension answers. So we want to sh show them there is a whole bank of other words that can explain what you're thinking as the reader as you interact with the book. Okay, so let's not confuse ourselves. Where are we? I don't know. Where are we, Mr. C? Do you know why I've said that? I've said that because he's texting someone. And like me, you might be thinking, who are you texting, love? Because it's not my mother. It's yes. Twitter, unfortunately. Right. Can everybody concentrate who's live? Hashtag Sunday sessions. And I mean everybody. Okay. So here we have uh, this page. I'm actually going to read this page. So it's a little bit of a slither of a Jack Noreen moment. Within a few hours of landing, News of Belka and Strelka's amazing journey had spread all around the world. They were celebrated and loved everywhere they went. Pictures of them appeared everywhere, on stamps, postcards, on television, in newspapers, even films and cartoons were made about their adventures. Everyone wanted to see the two brave little dogs that had flown around the earth. So... This question, how did people feel about Belka and Strelka? Well, it's locked in lots of different places, some places, uh, but this place is kind of a very obvious on a plate um, for the reader about how we feel. Now, um, so... That's your first question. The second question comes from the second tier. So, for example, text structure and layout. So we could choose any, any lens we want, but it's up to us. We're going to choose this one. And I'm showing the children, look, this question is asking you, asking you to read like a detective through this lens. Why is the information organised 
this way on the page. And every time I ask them a question, and I'll explain more about this in a minute, I always trailblaze a high utility, versatile word, include, yeah? So this question is essentially asking us to go, well, look, it's, it's, now we want them to notice here, look, we've all got the, so it's in three sections. So it's kind of, and the layout, and you might want to reference this sort of thing, it's kind of all of this indicating popularity, yeah? And then the third question is coming from the bottom tier, the analytics, what language is used to show us the dog's mission was seen as positive? And this is through the lens of words. And here is this high utility word addition. Right, so they're the three questions. When you've got that half an hour, chunk it back into three 10 minutes and in demonstration comprehension, you are going to model how to answer those but it's got a certain feel to it and shape. So let me just explain. What you want to do is get children to organize their work on a double page spread. So that is, oh my God, I can't even draw a straight line. I feel like I've been stopped by the police. <laughs> I feel like I've been stopped by the police. Draw a straight line, can't do it. Um, so that's the spine of the book. We always work with demonstration comprehension on a double page spread. This is called writing side, and you'll recognize this from write stuff, and this is called thinking side. The session has three questions, yeah? And you'll also notice that they know what lens they're working in, and these can be, you know, as long as they know, they don't have to be in their book, as long as it's modeled, and we, you know you, we've got these symbols, um, as small symbols that you can buy, you can have stickers, it doesn't really matter, as long as the kids know, yeah, so feelings, text layout and structure, and language, they are the three comprehension questions, they also know, before they even start, the kids know that these are important high utility words, capture, include, and addition, now it goes like this, this is the hike, the teaching and learning hike. I, it's going to feel hard, it's an upward incline, but I'm taking you with me. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to model, we, it's slightly different from write stuff, we start on the writing side and we start to model and construct a damn good comprehension answer and what we want them to do is watch how we're constructing it. Watch as they see a window to the writer's brain, yeah? And as we get to certain words, like achievement, I, there, I show them other words that are in that synonym family. Their success, their accomplishment, their achievement. Now, I'm going to choose achievement. But we do that so that when they write theirs, they've got options. So when they're watching us do demonstration comprehension, they are doing, the kids, and I need you to understand this, are doing two things. They are watching the answer. They are writing words in thesaurus thinking synonym families as you write them over here. So when they, once they've seen the model, what they'll have in their book, for clarity, I'm telling you this, they'll have word banks here, word banks here, and, and it will be blank over here for them to have the wire frame of your scaffold, but they are going to use different words, but they've got some key language here they can tap into. Mr. C... Are there any questions? Uh, not related to this, no. Oh, are you flirting with people in the group chat? No. Oh, fine. I, I've got a question. Oh, yeah, good. Which you've answered, really, but I'm just going to double check it. So, Denise... Put, uh, what, oh, you put your camera on. Like you've been told, no. Yes. Put your camera on. So, Denise is saying... Denise Davis. So, she is saying, uh, would, would the children do any recording during this session? 
written recording, I presume, or is it all oral? Jane. This is written recording. You've got to recognise that, and, and I talk about this on the Hooked on Books course in a load of detail. We are creating a two-week cycle of reading sessions. There are, over time, there are five book talk sessions that are talky, talking, 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 comprehension answers. And then there are demonstration comprehension sessions. And demonstration comprehension sessions are written down. What kids will write down is thesaurus thinking word banks. They will write down the high utility word. They will watch me model a damn good answer and they will write their version of a damn good answer with these word banks to help them. It is recorded. It is written down. I think the important thing to note on this is that put you your doing, camera on. No, no, I'm talking to you. You're doing the demonstration. The teacher's doing the demonstration so that the children can emulate it. Yeah, we're doing the demonstration as a teacher, uh, so the children can emulate it and write their version. But they're not copying this. They're seeing how to construct this. Now I'm going to do an example here. Look this way. Can I? Can, there are more questions before we move on. Ah, oh, why don't I demonstrate this first? Okay. You don't lose the questions like you normally do, Mr. C. Okay. And then I will take the questions after that. Because I think when I demonstrate this, you'll get it a bit more. Okay? So, here we go. I am now going in mode as teacher. And you're the kids in the class, right? And I'm going to do this twice tonight so you can get a feel for it. This is the third question. And... We know that this question is about language. It's from the bottom tier of the reading rainbow. And the question is, what language is used to show us the dog's mission was seen as positive? OK, can you see here? I've got this high utility word addition that I am. The reason why I've got that there is because I'm forcing the children to include it in their answer. That is a high utility word challenge. So it might be considered, it might be um, suggests. I take a versatile word and that is that they've got to include it. Now, on the thinking side here, so this is the spine of the book here. On the thinking side, pupils jot thesaurus thinking words. They watch me model before they write their own. So it is formally recorded. So... What language is used to show us the dog's mission was seen as positive? What you do as a teacher is you start on the writing side and when you hit challenging words, you show children how there are other words that it could be so they've got options when they write theirs. What language is used to show us the dog's mission was seen as positive? The mission was... And I'm going to, so I've taken part of this question to frame the beginning of this answer. Now, um, I could say the mission was seen. And I'm going to use some thesaurus thinking here. I need other words in this family because the mission was seen. The mission was recognised. I could say that. That's a really good word. The mission was perceived. I like that word. I like all of those words, actually. They all work because they're in the same family. The mission was perceived as positive. It really was seen as positive. I know that because I was reading from meaning. It was seen as positive and this is... Um, well, it's obvious, you know, there's a whole book celebrating these dogs and how brilliant they are. Uh, but obvious, I mm, don't know, this, and this is obvious. I'm going to do some thesaurus thinking here. This is, um, no, maybe I don't want to say that first. I do want to say it is obvious, but I'm going to separate that out. So I'm going to hold, I sometimes do this. I'm going to hold that thought 
So I'm going to hold that door and I'm going to pin it down. I'm going to say that later because I think that's a separate point. Uh, and this uh, is, hmm, maybe it's intertwined with this. This is indicated. Uh, this is emphasised. Yes, this is, I'm going to have emphasise. This is emphasised. Uh, and maybe I want to use this as well. And made obvious. And made obvious to the reader with language such as and now I'm going to use evidence because this is really important when you're trying to uh, read like a detective. You've got to back it up with them, such as, so let's look back at the text, amazing and loved. Two words used in the text. You can't get more smiley face positive than that. Oh, now this is my chance maybe to use this word, addition. So I'm going to keep my eye on that. Um... I want to say that all of this means that um, not only are they amazing and loved, the writer says they're brave uh, to go on this mission. Uh, so maybe that's how I can use addition. In addition, and talk about bravery, in addition uh, to these adjectives, amazing and loved, to these adjectives are oh, amazing and loved, uh, brave, oh, don't make a spelling mistake, Mrs. C, here we go, brave is used, is used, mm, not sure about is used, uh, is, what else could I say, is used, is uh, mentioned, sounds too chatty, in addition to these adjectives, brave is an important word, an important word uh, attached to describe the dogs. Now, what children get from that exchange is they will jot these with you and they are jotting and listening and watching the model and then now I say, I want you to write your answer in your demonstration comprehension book. You can use perceive, recognize, seen. You can use emphasize, indicate it obvious. You can use any of those words. You must use addition somewhere in your answer. And you can borrow anything you want to lean on. But you are going to construct your own answer. Off you go. And we mustn't rush that. They need time to do that. And they need oh, that kind of repeated practice around that. Yeah. So that slowly, slowly we can fade back on kind of them taking more responsibility. But it, they need really good examples. Right, Mr. C, what were those questions that you had earlier? Um. He's lost them. He's lost, lost them. them. He's covering himself. I don't know who he's texting, quite frankly, but, you know. Um, it, it, the moment is lost. I think you've answered it, actually. Have we? I don't right. know. Here we go. So, Mrs Langtree has said, would you be, it's slightly off uh, this, would you be using the book talk sentence stems to create these questions, or would you be using content domain, subject knowledge, formulated questions? There are published uh, comprehension questions. No, I know what she means. She means um, you lean, you know, do you think the Reading Rainbow doesn't cover the national curriculum? Do you think the Reading Rainbow doesn't cover content domains? Of course it does. It does that and more. You know, anything I design is the national curriculum and like loads of things they've missed. You know, don't worry that and what you've got to do is let the reading rainbow guide you. Then you've covered the national curriculum, high expectations, and a bit of zhuzh. Do you know what I mean? You let the reading rainbow guide you, and that is how you construct their question, the questions. You know, we're, we're making them readers for life. That's that's where we're at. You know, we're on a bigger 
all-encompassing mission to just make teaching and learning absolutely wonderful. Mr. C, any other questions yeah, out there? Yeah. I'm a, I'm Don't let me get all cross and angry. I'm, right. getting, I'm tired. Right, so this is Joe uh, Drury. He says, in writing, yes. uh, you will have deepened the moment, but it yes. finishes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have something similar? You haven't put your camera on. You haven't put your camera on, have you? Right, on he screen. always does that. And then you can't hear the question. It's always. on Twitter. I can't look at the camera and tweet. Go back to the beginning. No one can hear you. So in writing, no, I've done that one. So hang on a minute. Um, no, you haven't. Well, right, I've lost it. Started in writing. People demonstrate deep in the moment. Is that one? Yeah. So d would you deepen the moment? Uh, like writing. So can they, uh, you know, elaborate on their answer? Okay, really good. Of course they can deepen. But the point is, what you'll actually find, like a lot of people say to me, this is a pacey. You know, there's nobody contacting me saying, um, oh, actually, we need we need it to be a bit quicker. That we, we want them to do that well. And of course, the very f it's not only just deepening. You know, children will go off piste. Children want to go on their own heights. Of course, they can add more, they can deepen, and there are kids who will want to do that as well. So, yes, is the quick answer to that question. Okay, I'm now going to show you the same sort of thing, just so it's like we hear it again. Yeah, I get it. I thank you. Can you give me another worked example? Yes, I will. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Um, so, I'm saying nothing new, I'm just going to repeat and say in a different way what I've already said, and then give you a key stage two example. So, oh, I don't know what that means there. I'm gonna just, I think that said recap, and now I've mucked that all up again. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. So, we are, this is what demonstration comprehension is. You read a text. You don't read too much. You know, sh less is more. We share the first question, through, oh, I've got me rubber on, that's why I'm having an absolute meltdown. Mr. C, will you help me when I get a Tiswas, please? Tiswas, my favourite programme as a child. Phantom Flan Flinger and Sally James, neck to toe in leather. I mean, really. <sighs> that's all I'm saying. And I know there's fellow Sally James fans out there. Right, uh, read the text, share the first question uh, from the Fantastics, uh, and pupils, do you know, that there's a whole young tranche of young teachers that don't even know what Tiswas is. Do you know what I mean? They don't even know what Tiswas is. I mean, anyway. Come on, Jane, get on with it. Yes. <laughs> Right, so pupils pair and taught the answer, the teacher models and have relevant. Now, that is before we get into modeling it, when they've got the question part, and I probably haven't said this, that's not probably is letting myself off the hook. I haven't said this. You have a question. You land the question. You have three questions. I want them to chat about what they think the answer is before you hit the model. So they're also properly switching on their thinking to what that question is. Then we model the answer. We do the relevant thesaurus thinking. The pupils watch, they listen, they drop the language on the thinking side, and then they answer the question in their own words. Then we repeat. Okay. This is the book I'm going to choose for Key Stage 2 Modelling and this was sent to me by a lovely friend on the teacher squad and you know who you are. Uh, this is a diary of a young naturalist and it's by Dara McNulty and it's about his world. He's a teenager. McNulty. McNulty, yeah. that's what I said. Uh, so he's a teenager who is properly entwined with nature and he's writing his diary and it's just so wonderful to show children um, a really young person's writing how amazing it is and and how nature is so important it's a book um, 
locked with so much awe and wonder how much he loves um, the world and how he describes nature with meticulous detail. It's really beautiful. Now, um, I'm not going to read all of this, um, but he grows up in Ireland and it's about his struggles with homework, exams, friendship and how he is a committed, lifelong uh, conservationist. So I'm just going to read a little bit of it. Actually, I probably need to read it all, don't I? So that the demonstration comprehension makes sense, even though Mr C is me to worry up. I don't think I can. So here we go. Let's just read this so you've got it under your belt. Look, if you if you want to clear off, do. You can, we'll leave it on YouTube. You can watch another night. Don't clear off. We love you. Stay. Dara. My name means oak in Irish and sitting up in the branches of the majestic tree, feeling the pulse of life that has been growing in C Castle Archdale soil for nearly 500 years, I was clinging to my childhood by a twig. I watch a chaffinch in the garden with confetti flecks on his silver crown. He rests on a branch of our cypress tree and evergreen now, turned powdery white with snow. The chaffinch's pinch blush crest puffs out as he's joined by a pair of siskings, one citrus yellow and black, the other delicately flecked with pewter, a daintier yellow. The robin, as ever, is lording it about, pompously strutting to ward off any upsurpers. Usurpers. Usurpers, I mean. Earlier there was a four males and one female tussle of feathers and pecking heads. Robins are so aggressive. They're said to sever the neck of any opponent, but I wonder if they do that in a garden so full of seeds, nuts, and fancy buggy nibbles, plenty for all. A song thrush plays hopscotch in the snow, scrabbling around for the seed we've scattered. The bright red of half-eaten apples in spot is spotted. The thrush pecks, releases juice, I smile. The thrush comes at odd points in the season, which is a sort of unpredictability that would have caused me frustration and pain in the past. But now I've learnt to rationalise the unreliable thrush and to appreciate all the encounters without ties of expectations, well sort of. This book is incredible. It really is beautiful. Now, um, this is what I want the demonstration books to look like. There is clarity about the three reasons to read. It's coming from the rainbow. We have one lens from the fantastic tier and this one we're going to be using noticing. We have a second one from the stylistic tier. This one is uh, setting and the third one, analytics. The children know what the question is and we give them in here. And remember, you can get them off the website. They're called Book Talk Bonus Words, High Utility Words. They cost, I don't know, fiver, a fiver, a cost of fiver. For your year groups, how you teach words, very versatile. They know the question and their book is laid out and we do that properly. They're so, also included in the interactive reading rainbow. They're also included in the interactive reading rainbow. In fact, we're practic they're everywhere. They're there, you can access them. Right, so this final question here, look. I'm going to model this one. The children, so let's just go through that order. The third reason to read is analytics. This is the question, kids. I was clinging to my childhood like a twig. What do you think Dara meant by this? You have got three minutes to chop, kids. Chat and jot, chot. What do you think? Have a chat, what do you think? Chit chat, chit chat, yeah? Then I am going to say to them, your high utility word is indicates. It's versatile, it's powerful, but you must use this somewhere in your answer. And then you move as a teacher, starting on writing side, they're infilling backwards onto the vocabulary vault, giving them thesaurus thinking words. They watch that, they jot with you the words, and then they have a go and write their own. So here we go. I was clinging to my childhood like a twig. What do you think Dara meant by this? 
So this statement indicates I nah. <laughs> That's the last word, isn't it? So this wasn't that anyway. Indicates. So I know that is indicates. That's the challenge I've been asked to do. You see how I've put in the um why wouldn't me rubber work, Mr. C? I don't know. Oh, it's just working now. Uh, this statement indicates getting there early. I've used that straight away. That Dara. Now, you've got to look at this and help children see a lot of writing. Let's go for big stuff. Is it positive? Is it negative? Clinging to my childhood like a twig. Well, actually... It indicates he, want to, he wants to stay as a child, but he is going to grow up. It's inevitable. And clinging to it like a twig, it's almost like a, a desperate, it feels negative. I want to stay there. I, I love being a kid. I don't want to grow up. The statement indicates that Dara is very reluctant about growing up. Full stop. I come out fighting, I put in the high utility word, good girl, Mrs. C. The clinging, let's put that in dib dibs, you know, inverted commas, and bringing that down. The clinging reveals, mm, I'm going to go to thesaurus thinking, is this the best word to use? Reveals, affirms, is in the same family, informs. They're all good words. I like them all. I'm, I'm actually going to stay with reveals. Um, the clinging reveals that Dara is like emotionally attached. It's attached, maybe. Uh, it's grip. It's almost like a twig's on a tree. It's grip. Yeah, I'm going to say gripping rather than attached is emotionally gripping to his childhood and he does not want it to end and he does not want it to be over yeah uh i want to say something about the twig actually you know a twig can snap really easily it's not a branch it's it's um younger it's more fragile oh i like that word now, I might not use this for thesaurus thinking, but I'm going to write down fragile and I'm going to pin it. It's really important to pin words because I know I'm going to use that in a minute. Um, and I'm going to want to save it, so I pin it. Uh, and it does not want it to be over, full stop. The simile of a twig. You see, I'm rushing now, Mr. C. I'm making spelling mistakes. Of a twig works on two levels, I think. On two levels. Firstly, a twig, shall I say the fragile bit now? Yes, in case I forget, but I've pinned it. Firstly, a twig feels fragile. I'm just going to tick that off because I've included that now. And easily broken. And hints that he perceives that his childhood will break, um, that doesn't sound quite right, um, that his childhood could snap like a twig, could snap like a twig. Uh, secondly, there's something else going on here, because it's all linked in with nature, isn't it? Um, secondly, this uh, image uh, means, oh, is that the best word? I don't know. Means? I don't know if it's certain. What? What? Uh, means hints, maybe. Uh, suggests. That's good. Implies. Secondly, this image, I'm going to have hints, I think. This image hints uh, that, no, 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 not that, at, a, that he has. A, a deeper sadness. Secondly, this image hints at a deeper sorrow, maybe, a deeper sorrow that 
when he is a grown-up, he's a grown-up, he might be more distant from nature because he's so entwined with nature now and he's, he's scared. He sees grown-ups who aren't attached to nature. We need to model in this deep way. It needs to have pace, it needs to have pelt. They need to, they can write slower. We're writing quite quickly. They're seeing our thinking. They're writing these words down. They're understanding the idea of pinning. Oh, that's popped into my mind, that fragile. I'm not ready for that word, but I want to write down fragile. I'm not ready for uh, sorrow, but I'm going to pin it. That's what writers do all the time. And demonstrate. Can I, can I just ask yes, a yeah. Me? Ask questions. So Katie's got a question. She's no, put about, yourself on camera, Miss Lee. So Katie's asking about PEE. So you know, point evidence oh, yeah. Um, explanation. Yeah. And do do you have systems? The the whole. I'm going to answer this, Jane. So the whole of the book talk system is based on Jane's system. So learn about it, use it. The children will, use, will adopt it. That is the the system. So uh, the the demo comprehension that Jane has just showed obviously you're going to be doing that regularly and they're going to be adopting that style um, and getting used to it and it's really about exposing uh, the sort of cracking open the text so that they can look into it in your demo comprehension so you're just sort of like um, it's, it's very uh, explicit what you're doing but it's, it takes time you need a number of sessions before they really begin to get it I'm going to put it back to you, Jane, just so you know, as much as it's not picking a nose or anything. Okay. I am calling out to people. We have got really kind of COVID struck by um, our action research project about demonstration comprehension. And so I genuinely couldn't run some of the things we were going to go for. And I need people on the ground I've got some really good examples but I want more I want to see more examples in books about how you're getting on how the kids are getting on how is pinning working how is the source thinking working did you have to start with two demonstration comprehension questions did you have to start with one um I think once you've got structures for learning and once you know what the big game is, you, and remember, I cut in at the high expectations, big journey. And as teachers, we've got to kind of scaffold it up and get them ready and okay. train them. We've got to train them. It's it's not going to come quickly and easy. I, I don't want people in tears. I am giving you big, bold messages for you to make teacher judgments. And you've got to trust your judgments. You've got to say, right, that, I get the long game, but I know my class, that's going to take them six weeks to get there. And that's what teaching's about. And you then slice it back and think, yeah, I know what the long game is, but this is how I'm going to scaffold it up for them. And uh, that's where I need your help. You know, I need your help with that. And this is a genuine call out. Have a go. Use your common sense and also trust your instincts about how you need to adapt it. And some of the most inspiring people I know out there, like Emma Stanley, they'll they'll come on training around editing stations and they'll take it on and they will make it live and breathe for them and then give me a feedback loop about what worked. And then that, that sort of and that is why we are a genuine symbiotic family. I can't do things without you and your feedback is so critical to me. And do you know how, how important it is that we talk about small stuff? I love, I've had people talk to me about digraphs today. You know what I mean? I, I, that's how small I go. I'm all about the phoning. Right, we're nearly there. We're done, folks. I've got a few last messages for you. Up there, uploaded to download is... Hooked on books. It is about 10 hours of training to access. You can buy it now. Um, lots of people have bought it already. And that is a new way of thinking about training. You can have a training day and you can just say, right, 
access it how you want and also have some time sort of your classroom. You know what I mean? That is great. We talk on there about demonstration comprehension, slowly, deliberately, carefully. We talk about responsible reading. We talk about book talk. Everything's under the arc of the there's, reading rainbow. Are you on camera, Mr. C? No, I'm just saying to you, there's lots of people that have done the right stuff training. It's very, you know, the structure is the same. Yeah, and what I'm going to say to you guys, is like, don't, go and ask the community. You could literally say in the chat now, is there anybody who's done right stuff training? And, and people have. Ask them, um, you know, what they thought of it. Because that's really important you know don't, it's that sense of is it worth it you know time is so precious is it worth it you know ask yeah. others ask others um the other thing that i've been losing sleep over but it is done now um is independent right ideas and this is giving children that sense of i knew where they can go with it and can I just say as an aside it's their work it's their stuff but this is like to get us going remember as well the DFE lets us have any stimulus any experience that triggers independent writing so don't go back in every single unit plan we have uh, taken from uh, the DFE and STA, all the things that you're allowed to do on one sheet of A4. We've captured it. So there's, look at that as well. But if you're in the unit plan family, we give guidance and it is there to spark their thinking. I do can not I, know. Can I, in actual fact, I need to, somebody's asked exactly where the, these are. So I'm going to show in a minute exactly how to get to them. Okay, Mr. C, Not yet. I'll do in, a minute. in a minute, is going to do some techie much schmecky stuff with you. But they are there, they are hosted on jconstein.com and they're in the unit plan family little love club. We have over a hundred just uploaded uh, five new poetry units. Uh, there's a Michael Rosen poem, for example, that's a model. There's loads of poems there. Uh, so we've got a really good uh, bank of poetry as well as non-fiction. And I had a tweet uh, this weekend from somebody who'd done the year six unit on a speech based on uh, Greta's speech, Our House is on Fire. That, you know, and then they've gone on, oh, and there's a girl reading it. I can't, I can't cope sometimes with the quality, the quality of work. Gonna, Go on, put your camera just on. Quickly show people where yeah. those. Will you please? Will you actually are. do something, Mr. C? For God's sake! Uh, so uh, you won't be able to see me. I'm just going to change the mic so it's mine. Well, I think everybody can hear me okay there. Where's your mic? It's up, it's just over here. No one. I told you it was shattered, didn't I? I'm going to the microphone. So hopefully everybody can see this now. So basically, if you are a unit plan um, person who does unit plans, you will be able to go into uh, any of the units and they're kept. So like, for instance, if I'm year two, I, I, and that's fact, where are the new poetry ones, Jane, whilst we're here? Well, go to any year and yes. you'll see poetry. Yes, okay, I can't quite find them at the minute. I'm a bit too tired. So, right, so in any of the unit plans, we can jump in and we can say, right, okay, uh, here's the BFG for year four. Within here, there's a little video here that explains, so Jane, you know, doing what she does. Um, and then all of the notes that she makes is in these download parts here. And then in another, I'm not on camera. <laughs> and then in another part, so let's try, uh, you can see just here, there's a down, another downloadable folder which you just click on and you download and that has all of the, um, what page are you on there on your iPad? Can you go back to the independent right bit please? Mm. So then that has all of those. So each one of them has this document here which will give you independent writing ideas uh, for the end of your units because we have, I would say we probably have about
And I'll say, tell you something else, shall I? He goes, you keep telling teachers to go and work on their marriages, and then all you do is write independent writing ideas for the community. Why don't you take your own advice? Mm-hmm. Everything I just said was yes. uh, muted, I think. No, was yeah, it? Right. I'll show it again. Oh, you're a... You're, I'm going to show it again because it's really important. Oh. So I'm going to stay on your mic. Okay. okay. Right, so I'm going to stay on Jane's mic and I'm going to show that one more time because it is really important. Sorry about that, everybody. I'm going to have to edit this video, aren't I? Yes. When it stays up yes. because of all of your mistakes, Jane. Shut up. Your right. mistakes. So in, in, if you're a unit plan person, you go into here, you pick any of your units. So you might do the princess and the P. As I was saying, um, You've got the video of Jane giving a little bit of an insight into that particular unit. The this So in the downloads parts, there's a couple of files now. There used to be one, which is Jane's notes that she makes, which is helpful. Um, at the Not the notes, the unit itself, which is obviously what you need. But we've now also got this one here, which is um, the independent writing ideas where you can download that. And Jane, are you back on that thing there? Yeah. So then you will see this document. So each one's got this document with all of the unit, uh, the independent writing ideas. And it, it's actually, um, uh, it's gonna, because we've had so many people requesting them that we thought, well, instead of sort of trying to generate them individually, Jane, we've got that now on there. So if you're already a subscriber to the unit plans, great. You don't need to worry about anything. You just jump on. You can also, oh, wait a minute. Oh, right, it's just when the camera came back to me. And oh, right, well, I've already said this, Jane. So somebody's telling me it's just the last bit, which was just a load of rubbish Me to, when the camera came back to me. So I'm going to put it back to you and forget about tonight ever existed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. Yes, did this exist? We did warn them, didn't we? we well, didn't. we... So it was looking a bit too slick. Yeah. So uh, on a kind of, do you know when you have that feedback uh, from Ofsted and they go, and so what did you think of that lesson? And it's like, well, it was obviously shit. That's why you're saying that. <laughs> so it was obviously shit. Uh, there you go. Uh, hmm. Right. Right stuff. Like we're gonna have a Christmas and then. Uh, on the 4th of January, if you want to be in a family of people who have me sober, like, probably not as much fun, but nevertheless, uh, you can get involved, and that will be happening on the 4th of January, you can email info at the training space, you can ring us, and you can also Google it, you can find it, it's on and Eventbrite. it's on Eventbrite, and it's called, I think it's called... Jane Is it bright Wilson. like funky? Is it like rubbish? Yeah, it's trying yeah. to be cool bright. Cool bright. Uh, so that's that. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're thinking, oh, if you're thinking, uh, you might be thinking, uh, get involved. And then that's a great day. Even if you've had me in your school, it's a great refresher. And like TAs are trained, everyone's together. Boom. So it's not a lot, it's virtual. You've got, it's to stay, virtual. you've got to make it clear. It's you it's your training day. It's my training day. And anybody who's been on Jane's training day where she's physically there for the wife's It's stuff. the same as that. So don't have it again, probably, unless you've got loads of staff changes. But broadly, rather than me driving to Newcastle, I don't mind driving to Newcastle, it only takes me six hours and my marriage is on the rocks. But you can have me virtually. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's that. And right, I'm going now. I've been on too long. But I am going to say this. Victoria Musson, big shout out to you. She did a baseline using Rooted. She basically downloaded a Right Stuff action plan. There's a book talk action plan. It's in the unit plan home. JaneConstantine.com. JaneConstantine.com. And she is just heart bursting all over Twitter about progress. You know, how kids have done at the beginning of in September and how they're doing now. And 
this is a message we get a lot. You know, kids who have got uh, fragments of sentences, uh, struggling to even uh, construct sentences in different ways. We've got this wealth of different sentence types. We've got stronger, we've got paragraphs, we've got four paragraphs. <laughs> Boom. Um, and then it's not overkill. It's not all flowery, flouncy, fluky. Yeah, it's precise. It was a horrible, gloomy night. The sky was all dark. Ooh, put that in a Stephen King novel, oh, why don't it. you? Is it nearly Christmas? <laughs> Ooh, boom. Hello, babes. <laughs> what have you done to her at? Oh, uh, she's a secret little guest on uh, Christmas Star uh, soon. Live lessons. Live lessons. She's, she's a little bit pissed on Sherry. Aren't you, babes? Uh, thank you, everybody. I've stayed on too long. It said, be quick. We're, 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 we're shonky and tired. Forget it. Be quick. Thank you for having me for the longest Sunday session ever. And I will see you uh, on the other side. If you're not a live lesson lover, have a great Christmas. Love you. Teach